Gynecologists, what's the most horrible thing you've ever seen? Gynecologist here. Sometimes I run into nasty cases where a girl goes days or weeks with one tampon. Necrotic vaginal cancer looks so-so too, but it doesn't even come close to the worst case of my life. A 19-year-old girl came to our clinic one day and complained that she had a hairspray cap stuck in her vagina. Well, that's not a problem, thought the naive me. But the catch was that she had stuck it in there when she was 15. That's four years ago. The motivation for the whole act she did not explain to us. But it was obvious that she was very ashamed. Even before she undressed, you could smell just the most horrible odor, which became even much worse when I started researching the problem. The lid was tucked in with the edge toward the top, and I could see that in four years it was well overgrown with vaginal tissues. The difficulty of extraction was further compounded by the fact that this lid had pierced her bladder and rectum. Several extensive surgeries had to be done to get it out. I'm not a gynecologist, but I know someone who recently had a hysterectomy, uterine amputation. Anyway, the girl had stitches in her vagina that had to be allowed to heal. But she was so anxious to get back to sexual activity that she couldn't stand it and snapped, causing her small intestine to fall out of her vagina. I was told everything in such detail that I think I will never be able to eat mincemeat again. According to the girl herself, when she was on her way to the emergency surgery, she could feel the intestine lying on her leg and throbbing. How do you delete someone else's comment here? I had a friend in high school who was very afraid to go to the gynecologist. When she finally decided to go for her first smear, she got so nervous that she clamped the doctor with her legs like a vice. According to her, it took some more time before she was able to relax and release the doctor. It was extremely embarrassing. Now, of course, she laughs about the situation, but her shyness about her female organs has not gone anywhere. She doesn't even like to use tampons. I'm a medical student. One time I went in to assist on a uterine amputation. When we went into surgery, we were told it was a small ovarian cancer, but it turned out to be much worse. All of the patient's insides were metastasized, so we spent 13 hours just to reduce their volume. Although the whole operation should have taken three hours, we had help from the general and vascular surgery guys at some points. We replaced half of the patient's blood volume. After everything she had been through, she was very unwell. She had a long, difficult post-operative period, but eventually somehow recovered from it and went home to her family. It was a very debilitating experience for all of us, but both the patient and her family turned out to be just wonderful people, so we were honored to help them. I'm not a gynecologist, but I do occasionally perform exams. One time I retrieved a tampon that had been inside for at least a month. The interesting thing is, the girl had been having intercourse the whole time. It smelled like hell. When she left, it took a few more hours to air the place out. The whole time we were walking around the clinic thinking how not to throw up. My dad told me about a woman who was severely addicted to heroin. For some unknown reason, one day she decided to get creative and injected it into her labia, which resulted in gangrene. I guess it wasn't worth it. A little late in responding, but still, the med student, I'll become a full-fledged doctor after a few weeks. Not exactly a gynecologist, though. When I had a practice in gynecology, I was sent to examine a young lady while I was preparing for the examination. The odor of the room became such that I began to think I was in for the worst bacterial deterioration I'd ever seen. I looked inside and start examining everything, but I don't see any unusual secretions. Strange. I start to pull back, and feel that the further I pull back, the stronger the odor. Turns out her feet were just stinking wildly. I highly recommend everyone read Dr. Lissa Rankin's book, What's Up Down There. There's a section where she writes about some of the worst cases in her career. Like how she found maggots, money, and so on. But those are still flowery. The coolest case was about a woman with a potato growing out of her vagina. Check it out. Wait, what? In short, a woman decided to stick a potato inside herself as a birth control measure. And since potatoes really like warm, dark, and moist spaces, it started to grow vigorously, and she ended up with potato sprouts dangling out of her vagina. My story isn't about vagina, it's about boobs. But it's no less disgusting. When I was in high school, I got involved with a student organization that sent high school students on internships. I decided to go help out at the trauma center. One day, a very elderly woman is brought in. Complaint is chest pain. Everyone can sense that there is an extremely creepy odor coming from her. So the doctor decides to wash and examine her. He washes her, lifts one of the breasts. And it starts to stink so bad, we all almost passed out. There was colorless favus under the breast. The doctor is washing it out, the crust comes off and a small hole is exposed, from which cockroaches start to come out. 
most likely she had eggs laid in a fold under her breasts. And when they hatched, the cockroaches couldn't find their way out, so they had to chew their way to escape. My mom had a story that I think is the nastiest hospital story I've ever heard. One time a patient in her 50s came in. Very obese, 500 pounds. She comes in and says that her husband during lovemaking complained of some kind of strange odor. But the funny thing is that not only her husband smelled it, but the whole hospital. Anyway, I don't remember all the details, but it ended up that her entire vagina was in necrosis. Surgery was necessary, but it didn't save her. She died shortly thereafter. The best part of this story is that her husband smelled that hellish odor first, moreover, during sex. I'm not a gynecologist, but I've seen some pretty rough stuff too. First, I saw a woman with vaginal cancer. Then I saw what happened to her after her vagina and cervix were completely removed. It's not a pretty sight. I can't exactly describe to you the whole procedure because I was a very young student at the time, but in the end all that was left of the former organs was a big hollow hole, with something dripping out of it. The poor woman was so grief-stricken that she begged her husband to leave her because, quote, after that you could never love me. But he turned out to be a good man. He was by her bedside the whole time, holding her hand, comforting her and feeding her love. You could tell the dude adored her. Second, we had a 485-pound lady admitted with lower extremity paralysis. She had a giant ulcer and necrotizing fasciitis that had destroyed everything in her genital area and buttocks. There were erosions of the rectum. We realized this because feces was leaking from several areas of the damaged surface. When the doctors asked us to take a urine sample from her, it turned out that she no longer had a bladder as such, and no vagina either. It was decided to try and patch up the wound. The six of us flipped her sideways and basically started shoving a bunch of gauze into the giant hole, hoping she wouldn't shit herself during the procedure. She died very quickly. We are powerless in these cases. I feel so bad for the first girl. I hope she is happy now. I feel sorry for all the people in this thread, including the readers. I am not a gynecologist, but I have had one defect since birth that I didn't pay attention to until I started using tampons. The point is that I developed a septum, from which I had not one hole, but two and I only realized I had a problem when one time I tried unsuccessfully to get tampon out of me. I put him in through one hole and then tried to get him out through the other, smaller hole. That's where it got stuck. It hurt like hell, but there was nothing I could do about it. Luckily, it happened when my mom was nearby. She thought I was just an idiot who can't get a tampon out, but then she saw what was wrong and took me to the gynecologist. I had surgery and now I have no problems. I'm not a gynecologist, but while I was working at the trauma center, I saw one interesting case. An elderly woman was brought in after a fall. We start looking. She had giant vaginal cancer. Her pelvis looked like two-thirds of a soccer ball had been stuck to it. The tumor was so big that it was pressing on the nerves in her left leg and obstructing blood flow, which is why she actually fell. Do you know what happened to her after that? No, she was still being worked on when I left. I hope they eventually put her on hospice. It's just that with a tumor like that at 80, there's no point in chemo, radiation, or surgery. I work as a nurse in the gynecology department. Oddly enough, I encounter all sorts of creepiness quite rarely. Women here are pretty sensitive about their vaginas, and in general, the vagina is a very hardy organ. It can withstand even the most improper treatment. The worst case was when a woman came to us on hysterectomy. At the beginning of the operation, the surgeon made a mistake and accidentally cut her intestine. It was decided to interrupt the operation until the intestine healed. But everything went wrong and it did not heal. Anyway, soon the intestinal incision fused with the post-operative wound on the abdomen and a fistula was formed through which feces came out. And a wound through which feces comes out is not so easy to heal, you know. The woman ended up stuck in the hospital for nine months enduring million infections, wound lacerations, complex bandages that took hours to apply and so on. At one point, her fecal wound was so big that two of my fists could easily fit in there. It ended with her having a permanent colostomy poop bag. And according to last reports, her uterus was never removed. Well, thanks to your stories, I will never again be embarrassed about not shaving my legs or bikini area before going to the gynecologist. A couple years ago, my buddy was an intern in gynecology. One time, a young patient came to them with two complaints. First, she couldn't get pregnant. Second, she has constant diarrhea. The gynecologist asks, how often do you have sex through the anus? She answers, always. Turns out her boyfriend convinced her that getting pregnant through the ass is easier than through the front. So she asked him to only roast her from behind. A story from a gynecologist colleague of mine. Girl comes in for a checkup, climbs on the chair. My colleague sticks his fingers up her cervix. At that moment, 
A brilliant question pops into her head. Have you ever wondered if it's anything like the turkey stuffing? My co-worker trying to keep a stone face, no, but now I'll think about it every Thanksgiving. The patient laughed and afterward looked my homie right in the eyes and clucked like she was a turkey while my dude's fingers were still inside her. My favorite Thanksgiving story. My grandmother worked as a nurse in the gynecology department for 20 years. One time she came home angry and yelled, if I ever have to look at anyone's vagina again in my life, I'm gonna kill someone for sure, along with breaking all the dishes in the house. She quit the next day. My mom's a gynecologist's assistant, so I've heard a lot of different stories. One time, a woman who smelled like a dumpster walked into their office. Turns out she's been wearing the same underwear for two months. It was a dark yellow-brown color. Apparently no one ever told her that she actually have to wipe her ass. I had a very strange first visit to the gynecologist. I was very nervous, and I got some old woman who obviously noticed it. To defuse the situation somehow, she said to me, Well, you're lucky you didn't end up with a male gynecologist. Their fingers look like huge wieners. After which she stuck her decrepit granny fingers in me. Thanks so much for watching. In the comments below the video, gynecologists can write what was the most horrible thing you have ever seen. And don't forget to check out our other videos. Oh, and by the way, enjoy your appetite. Goodbye.